welcome back. Today is the first lesson of a new project. We are going to be implementing EIP 2771 into one of our smart contracts. The reason being we want to allow us to pay for gas and so that our users don't have to pay for gas. We can dive into the details of this. I will link the EIP 2771. In this first lesson, we're gonna be deploying a smart contract that we will later on upgrade. Um, so let's take, for example, like what this experience might be for you as a developer. You come onto a project and your team has a great smart contract and now wants to potentially pay the gas for some of your users. You probably use an L2, something like Polygon, and so rather than having users have to go and bridge Matic over to the Polygon sidechain, you can just set up an EIP 2771 meta transaction relayer that can relay signed transactions onto the main smart contract without having users needing to pay for gas. So um, that's the high level, the EIP proposal. How we're actually gonna go into this is we're going to be using something called Biconomy. Biconomy is a nice tool that uh, lets us set up this EIP 2771 fairly simply. Um, we'll get into this into some of the, the later lessons as well. Where we're actually gonna get started with is Open Zeppelin. They've got a great tutorial for us to deploy an upgradable smart contract. That's what lesson one is gonna be about, deploying a basic upgradable smart contract. If you don't have the link to this, you should just be able to look up upgradable smart contract. And I believe this first link is the exact same upgrade reads plugin. Yeah, this is the exact same tutorial that I'm going through right now. So with that being said, they are slightly different. We want the upgrades plugin. Interesting, slightly different. So it looks like a quick Google search is not pulling this up as I would have liked. So I'm going to link both this and also the original. Um, let's get started with the code. Uh, so kicking this off, we're gonna spin up a new folder. Open up your terminal, um, go to wherever you like to store your projects. For me, I've got this nice little Udemy folder inside of my projects directory. And now I'm gonna start off by making a new project uh, and we're gonna call this uh, smart, yeah, we're just gonna call it smart contract. See the end of the smart contract. Now we're in a brand new empty folder. Uh, first thing I'm actually gonna do is look up setting up a hard hat project. I like uh, hard hat project setup. This is a very quick and easy way for us to create a new hard hat project and just make sure we do everything right. So we've already created our folder, we've already gone into it. Let's just set up a basic N npm init. This is gonna give us an empty package.json. From here, we can install hardhat. Once we install hardhat, we can then use npx hardhat to actually spin up that uh, hardhat application. As soon as this finishes installing. So we've still just got kind of a package.json, a package lock, and node modules. Now we're going to use npx hardhat, and this is going to set up all the files we need for hardhat. I just want a basic sample project. Um, yep, keep that as the root. Yep, yep. I'm just going to default to all of these. Now while we're here um, setting everything up, I am going to jump over to using with hardhat, the hardhat upgrades tutorial, and we'll see two other installations we'll want to get for our peer dependencies. So I'm going to copy both of these. It's going to be the Hardhat Upgrades library from Open Zeppelin, as well as the Nomic Labs Hardhat Ethers um, peer dependency. These are going to be uh, required in a couple seconds. This is us getting all of the packages we'll need inside of our smart contract project all set up. So now I'm going to paste both of those. We're gonna install both of those dependencies. And once we've installed those dependencies, I think we've just about got everything. I am also gonna npm install 
env so that I can save my private key in a separate file and not expose it when I push these changes up to git. Uh, let's see what we've got. Let's clear this out, ls. So here's what we've got. We've got a new hardhat config.js file. We've got a readme. We've got our contracts folder, scripts, and a test folder. Let's open this up in VS code by running code.slash. This is going to open up our IDE. And from this point, we've now got the code that we want to start looking at. So we've got our Solidity smart contracts. We've got our scripts. We're ready to keep moving through with the Open Zeppelin tutorial. Uh, so from here, we are going to jump over to the upgrading smart contracts Open Zeppelin doc. Um, we can kind of skip past some of the initial stuff. If you're curious about what upgradability is, you can read through. Uh, this is mostly a tutorial and project for gasless transactions. So I'll, uh, if you have questions about this, let me know and I'll probably make another lesson. Um, to get started, this is an example of a non-upgradable smart contract. And so what we need to do, um, I think we've already installed this package. I'm just going to make sure by installing it again. And then we want to make sure that we set up our hardhat.config.js. This is a very important step. Um, so inside of our hardhat.config.js, we're going to paste both of those libraries up top. This is going to allow us to actually use the upgradable libraries. Um, next, we're going to set up our networks. So for our networks, we're going to first just set up Mumbai. And honestly, that's probably all we'll do inside of this tutorial is Mumbai. Um, so we'll declare, I'm sorry. First thing we'll do is we'll declare a networks object. And then once we've got that networks object, now we can declare Mumbai. And inside of Mumbai, we need a URL. Um, and for this, you can, we need an RPC URL. So let's just look up Mumbai RPC URL. Gas Tracker, RPC, Matic Mainnet. I'm not interested in Matic Mainnet. I want. Ah, there we go. Mumbai Testnet. So now I can just take this RPC, and this will be our RPC URL. Once we've got an RPC URL, we also need a chain ID. This is going to be 8001, 80001. And then we also need an accounts. Now for me, accounts is going to be an array with only one element where it's going to be 0x. And then I'm going to use my uh, process.env.testnet private key. Now you might be saying, where's this variable coming from? Uh, I have not declared it yet, so give me just one second. Um, and now we're going to require uh, two different packages that honestly were kind of hard to find. So I'm going to manually type it out here to, to help us get our .env. So in order to do this, we're going to go const um, config. And this is going to be coming from equals require .env. That's our first thing. We're now importing config from .env. After that, we want to uh, declare resolve equals require path. This is going to help us out in our next step. And then the final step, we're going to go config uh, make only one parameter inside of there is going to be an object with a key of path and then a value of we're going to use that resolve function that we just imported and inside of there we're going to go double underscore dire name and then comma we're going to use uh, a string of dot forward slash dot env and this what this is going to allow is for me to actually use my this new file I'm going to create called dot env and inside of here I'm going to take my testnet private key and that's the variable I'm going to make. So this is the only time I'm going to show you this screen. You should paste your private key in here as like just the text. You don't need to wrap this in string. So you just like paste the text as is. 
I'm gonna move this onto my other screen and copy my private key real quick, just kind of off so that y'all don't get my private key because I've learned in the past that the private key is important to keep secret. So if anyone ever asks you for your private key, just know don't ever give it to anybody. And with that, I now have my private key. I don't need to share it with anybody. We should now have our Mumbai network configured. Let's head back over to the tutorial. We don't need this. We're all, we should be good on our hard hat, but I'm gonna leave that open. So we should be good in our hard hat config. So let's keep moving down. Now we want a script to actually deploy our smart contract. So um, this doesn't look normal. This is gonna be a deploying of a proxy but I don't like this smart contract. Do we have a better one over here? Mm. Is this the good one? We should have an initialize method. Command F initializer function. Here we go. Okay, so if we scroll down a little bit to the initialization, uh, this, well, do we even need an initializer? We might not need an initializer. Um, I guess I'm, I might be overcomplicating it by needing it. Uh, is this already good? I guess this is gonna be just fine. This is all we need for our smart contract to make it upgradable, hopefully. I guess we'll, we'll find out very soon. So I'm going to rename the smart contract we have in our contracts folder, just box.soul. And now I'm going to paste overriding everything. So what this is gonna do is it's got an event of value changed and it's got two functions in it. We've got a function called store and this allows us to update the value of this value variable. And then it emits the value changed event with that value. And then we also have the retrieve function where we can call this at any time and it's a public view. So it's not gonna cost us any gas off the bat um, and it'll just retrieve value. This store value is initially going to cost us gas. And what we're eventually gonna do is make it so that this is a gas free transaction using the EIP standard uh, EIP 2771. So now that we've written our smart contract, uh, we have already installed this, we've already set up our hard hat config. Next, we want our deploy function. So now we're going to go into our scripts and I'm going to make a new file called deploy.js. I actually don't care about the sample script, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, and now we should be good to deploy. Um, I think the next stage is actually, yeah, just running this so what this command is going to be is npx hardhat run and now we're going to run the script deploy a js file and we're going to do double dash network mumbai and just kind of telling you a little bit about well i'll send it off first and we'll just let this start to run oh error occurred under underscore dire name is not defined uh why is that the case I guess I'm probably typing this incorrectly. Oh, it's dir name, not dire name. I added an E in here. So let's remove the E and now let's try it again. Silly mistake. Okay, so now it looks like we're actually compiling. Um, but we got another error. Invalid JSON RPC response. Okay, so we got an invalid JSON RPC response, which makes me think we've got a bad uh, Mumbai RPC URL. So I'm gonna try to get a new RPC URL by going to chainlist.org. And on chainlist.org, let's check out Mumbai. Ah, can you just give me a I've already got it added, so I can't get a URL that way. I could remove it, but I just want Mumbai RPC URL. I want one that works, and I know a lot of these get deprecated, which is one downside of a public RPC. I could go and just set one up. Um, let's try this Chainstack Labs. Okay, let's try this again. feeling productive. It feels like we are submitting a transaction to the Mumbai network. 
Usually I won't sit here this long otherwise. Deploying, deploying, deploying. So while this is deploying, just to kind of break down what we did with this Double Dash Network Mumbai, looks like we just got a successful transaction. But the Double Dash Network Mumbai is going to use this chain information. So it's going to use this RPC URL, it's going to deploy to this network, and it's going to use this private key to submit the transaction. And so we just deployed a smart contract at this address. So what I can do now is head back over to my browser, and we can go to mumbai.polygonscan.com. I can paste that address in. And now we should see a contract that was deployed 30 seconds ago. And we've got admin was changed 35 seconds ago at the same time of deployment. Awesome. We have now deployed a smart contract onto the Mumbai testnet. The last thing we want to do is test that we actually can upgrade the smart contract. And so we're going to head back over to our Open Zeppelin tutorial. And now we want to... O is value a uint. Value is a uint. Interesting. Okay, so we'll, we will definitely be upgrading the smart contract. So here is going to be the upgrade code. And so what I'm going to do with this upgrade code is we're going to create a new script. And we're going to call this upgrade.js. And inside of upgrade.js, we're going to paste this function and let's talk about what's going on. So first thing we're doing is we're importing the hard hat library and we're import we're de deconstructing that object into both the ethers and upgrades uh, attributes. These are both going to be functions, or I guess ethers is an object and upgrades is also an object that contains functions. And so then we've got one function that's going to get called. First thing we're doing is we're importing our box contract. This is actually not going to be box v2, it's just going to be box. Um, and so then we're going to upgrade box, we're going to upgrade the proxy at this address, and then we're going to just console.log that the box was upgraded. I'm going to copy the contract address of the smart contract we just deployed and overwrite the default value that Hardhat gave us so that now we're going to actually upgrade this uh, smart contract. Now the only other thing we should need to do is run that script. And so I'm going to do the same command, npx hardhat, well not the same command, run a script upgrade this time instead of uh, deploy, and then we'll go double dash network Mumbai again. This should be upgrading our smart contract. Now we didn't make any changes, so it's not like it's actually going to be really doing anything, but it is, um, it's not going to change any of the functionality, but it is going to change the actual logic contract that is being deployed. So we just deployed a new smart contract and our proxy, uh, initial proxy contract is now going to be pointing at a different logic contract. And we can verify that. Um, we can see that there are only three events over here and one of them, interestingly enough, was that upgraded event. So now if I refresh this page, we should see a no upgraded event uh, just come in, hopefully. Um, three minutes ago looks like the last events that happened, so I'll refresh again. We just got to be patient while it actually shows up. Here it is. 24 seconds ago, we just got an upgraded event where we upgraded our smart contract. So uh, that is the end of this first lesson. We have officially created a smart contract, very basic, um, hello world box smart contract. All that it does is it can store a value and then we can retrieve that value. Um, so we have deployed the smart contract onto Mumbai testnet and we have also upgraded that smart contract. In the next lesson, we're going to be spinning up a, re a Next.js React frontend to actually interact with the smart contract to both read the value, to retrieve the value, as well as to store a new value in that smart contract. If you've got any questions, please reach out to me. Um, my social media handle often changes, but if you look up sweetman.eth, you should be able to find me on Twitter and most platforms to be able to message me. Um, other than that, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Next lesson is going to be the front end. If you got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, this is Sweets signing off. Thank you, everyone.